Push came to shove, you could make your own version of these just by studying this video and seeing how it's set up. Of course, you wouldn't be using bright orange bungee cords. You want to get yourself some olive drab spray paint, some uh, black spray paint, matte black, and you can actually attack the entire top of your mock shelter. Some people are known to put flags on them, string them through the, through the sides or whatever, but this is just a basic unit configuration. You're going to need your laptop with your Wi-Fi. You're going to need your webbing ready to go. You're going to need your, uh, the, your AWOL bag with that which is not in the mock pack ready to go, that which isn't immediately available in your campsite in case you have to bolt. But this is your basic introductory level layout to the mock center. On October 18th, 2005, I received a phone call at 8 o'clock in the evening. It's from my sister. She told me that, Sean, Mom and Dad's house is burned down. And so it did. We showed up here. The firemen were here, and they were doing a great job. They tried to save as much as they could. This is my old room. It's gone now. It's empty. My parents had all my memories and all my stuff in here, and it's burned out now. It's completely husked. Everything that's left is shoveled out. Ashes cleaned up. We're just waiting for the people to come down to condemn it. All the possessions I had of my youth, anything that I thought, you know, you'd want to hang on to, comic books, old records, things that define your memories as a child, physical manifestations of your life, all of it was here. And it's gone. It makes no difference. Soon this house will be leveled. And again, it'll make no difference to me in the current state. What will happen is is that my life will go on. So it's a collection of baggage that I no longer needed that got burned away. That's all it is. The things you own wind up owning you. That is true. So the trick to avoiding the pain that comes from separation with your material goods is to separate yourself from your material goods and realize that it's all just stuff. Nothing you have defines you. You define you. And when that happens and your house burns down, it's just another Tuesday. Here are some highlights from the upcoming Season 2 of Patrolling with Sean Kennedy. Premiering Summer 2005. This kind of a place here. Okay. Now, first of all, anytime you're going near any sort of a supernatural structure, you never, I don't care what the reason is, you never go in there at night. I don't give a shit what's happening. You don't go in there at night. You see it all the time. Oh, little Jimmy's missing. Let's wait for the fog to roll in and then we'll head down to the house. Fuck that. If Jimmy's missing, he's at the house. If you go in the house, you're gonna get sucked in and eaten. That's how it works. Now, graffiti is very telling. The first thing that's gonna happen is I'm in a low light circumstance in here. So we gotta change our optics up. here that isn't broken that's cut which means that whatever's in the basement is trying to get up and try to come up through the basement to the roof produce some heat let the walls on fire but the thing didn't burn but that will be proof of the supernatural though because all the whole purpose of ghost dance of the operation is to see that there is something that's it that's all i want I don't care what happens. People are bursting into flames. I could give a shit less. So long as everybody who takes part in Operation Ghost Dance is well aware of the threats and risks. But we're just, you know, the logs are sick of it. We're going to cut the shit. Be prepared. 
be prepared for all kinds of results. Well, we're all but it will happen. Thing. I don't really know what I'm going to wake up. Some people, like I talked to one person and they said I was going to wake up like, like and people could start levitating and stuff and I'm not careful. And, and uh, so I, I don't know, like do you think there's any danger in this at all? Not as long as you keep your intentions firm. You're pretty clean on that intention That thing. intention has to be there. That's, that's the key to all magic, all of manifestation. Right. If you're trying to manifest um, an awakening in people, a spiritual awakening, and that's your intention, that's perfect. It's strength in numbers. You know, awaken. That's the whole point, is awaken. We don't know what we're going to awaken. We don't know how it's going to awaken. We don't know how it's going to affect them. They're going to wake up. That's the plan. And we're looking at about the numbers. About 5,000 people are going to do this at the same amount of time. Over period of about no real direction other than to wake up and to empower yourself yeah empower yourself yeah the whole like some people could float it's all like focusing so we're taking 5,000 people putting the energy in a ball and then forcing it back on so that's sort of the idea sounds like it could be a good idea sounds like it could go horribly wrong <laughs> how, how could it go horribly horribly wrong you're always good you know and if it wasn't for you I wouldn't feel as empowered do the kind of things that I do in my day to day life. Please, please don't blame me. <laughs> you know, no, seriously, no. Dax like my big brother, you know. If he just said no, I wouldn't have done it. So now, now that Dax made sure it was okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on and, you know, kind of try to, try to help these kids using, you know, ancient Crowley's techniques to, to try to, you know, make the world a better place. My name's Sean Kennedy, and I am the fucking man. I'm gonna get arrested. <laughs> So you say you gotta know why the world goes around And you can't find the truth in the things you've found And you're scared shitless cause evil about